One of the most popular places to visit in New South Wales is the Janolan Caves. Magnificent limestone caves full of wonderful natural adornment. But what's limestone and how did it get formed? Oddly enough, the story started in many cases with animals. Because although this is now high up in the Blue Mountains, once upon a time it was under the sea. And as animals living in the sea often have limey skeletons, here are some land snails, you can see, that's a limey shell. The same is true of sea snails and things like corals. When they died, those skeletons fell to the bottom of the ocean, and here they are. This was once the seafloor. And you can see in there, are still today, the remains of those animals. Concreted in there, in the limestone, which is made from those very skeletons. Well, over the years, that rock has split, and the rain's come in and gone into those cracks, flowed underground in rivulets and creeks, and really, underground rivers. And as they've gone, they've been chewing out the rock. an ancient river once ran and as it ran it doesn't do much of it now unless the rains are very strong but as it ran it was quite a torrent and it cut out this creek bed and it cut out a tunnel because it was all underground and the walls got further and further apart and the roof of that tunnel got taller and taller until in the end there's an enormous cave or chasm here and that lasted until in fact the roof fell out there's the hole it came from it smashed into the bottom and it's lying all around me which is okay unless you happen to be an animal running around up there. And on a dark night, you may not have been able to see where you were going, the chances were pretty good you'd come through that, down into this natural trap, get smashed to the bottom. That was the end of you, and you'd lie there until your bones whitened. At least you would, unless the river took those bones and pushed them even further underground into the caves. <laughs> natural trap like that, the bones could be washed to a natural collection like this, and a most exciting one for zoologists, because it's our only evidence of what lived around here and doesn't live around here anymore. For example, skulls like that are found not only at Janolan, but in places like Tantanula. In fact, widespread places uh, over the mainland of Australia. It's the Tasmanian Devil. It's now confined to Tasmania. It was gone from the mainland long before the Europeans came. But its presence here shows that once these creatures and the thylacine roamed the mainland. Well, there's some grizzly relics too. In the skeleton cave at Janolan, there's this one, an Aboriginal skeleton. Aborigines didn't use these caves. It's thought that he was washed in by one of those rivers a long, long time ago. But some of the bones are much more recent. These, for example, would probably be months or even weeks old. It's a mixed collection, and they're the product of owl pellets. When owls eat their food, they don't always pass in their droppings these bony bits. They regurgitate them in fluffy balls. And if you take them apart, you can see from the skulls what are the creatures the owls been eating, the ones that live around about here. A very interesting collection too. There are sugar gliders, rats, bits of bone that on analysis may prove to be something else. A very interesting indication of what's living around about these caves. And really, what's living in them. The owl lives here, and in the darkness gets around with its uh, large eyes. Bats live here. They're pretty blind, but they can get around with sonar. And some of the little cricket-like wetters, grasshopper-like creatures, will work partly by eyesight, but partly by feel, with their long antennae. So really, throughout their long history, these caves have been associated with a variety of animals that's most interesting and quite strange.